All right, we are back for another Cosmic Opinion. Finally in my own little time slot here on Mondays from 3 to 4. Probably be about 3.45, 3.50. But uh, I will uh, be here every Monday, uh, except for my anniversary, which actually the intern is going to be here today. Um, This is Liege. Uh, The intern will be here today actually um, on a little break from work. She works about a block away, so she's actually going to come in and uh, talk about some of the stuff we're going to talk about today. Uh, It's been eight months since she's been on the show, so that will be a welcome voice. Well, I mean, not everybody loves the intern, but uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, Today, first I want to say that uh, if you're listening to us, you're on RadioShare.com. Of course, if you're listening to us on the computer, you're using Google Chrome. If you're listening to us on the phone, feel free, get that Google Chrome. It's actually a, a, I think it's the fastest uh, system to use personally, but uh, use that. Uh, if not, you're listening to us on uh, phone number 605-477-3037. If you wanted to actually call in and talk, hit the five to call in. I uh, sent messages again to uh, the Gas McBride show. I actually talked to Grimace. First time I talked to Grimace in quite a while, uh, probably the last like two or three months. And uh, I'm going to see if he wanted to uh, come in on the show today. Uh, I'll start off with... Uh, just a little bit about us. Uh, we started this podcast, uh, which was on YouTube and uh, SoundCloud. Only the last like episode or so was on SoundCloud. But started this podcast back in uh, June of 2012. And what we did was uh, it was just me and a couple friends, and we uh, just kind of got everything set up. And and basically, it was just a way to vent stuff we wanted to talk about. We'd see current events, and we'd talk about it all the time, and realized why not actually have these conversations where it seems to be a little more fun. We'd, we'd drink. We'd have a really good time sitting in the back room at the house I have in Florida, this huge back room, and we would actually do our shows from there. So uh, we started doing this, uh, the Gaff and I, and then uh, Mendel. Mendel, you won't hear from. He's busy at work. But uh, the Gaff and I actually um, started all this and talked a lot about sports at the beginning. We realized that uh, sports is great and all, but there's a lot more going on. Like today's show, the Gaff would love this. I really, really hope he does call in. Uh, it's actually going to be about sex and sex being used as a tool, um, which in that sense, what I mean by that is uh, being able to do different things, uh, paying for different items and things like that. I've, I've got probably seven different topics to talk about today that relate to that. So you guys should really enjoy this. Um, this We're going to try to do something new with the show uh, where we're actually going to um, have kind of like a, a little stricter format. Uh, what we're going to do is that at the end of every show, I'm going to actually talk about something local. Back in, uh, we used to do this when we were doing the show in Florida. Uh, we would uh, talk about a, like a local story or try to find as many local stories as possible and bring them up, talk about them and things like that. So I found, uh, I've got enough information right now for about three shows. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking it down, doing different topics every week. I'm actually going to do a little, uh, a mini series. Uh, type thing where I'm going to actually have a topic that I'm going to talk about multiple weeks, just talk a little bit about it, break it down like a like an ESPN 30 for 30 or something like that. The first one I'm going to do is going to be regarding Caitlyn Jenner. That is going to begin next week. Um, I've got a couple websites, a couple ideas that people have thrown out there, uh, CNN and, you know, different different websites, and I'm going to talk about that, but that's not going to be till next week. Um, I'm going to start a little two-part series on that. Uh, but also, uh, like I said, when it comes to local things, my plan is to talk about, uh, you know, arrests that are local. Things like uh, I've got a good one two or three weeks from now that has pictures from back in the 40s, 20s, you know, 60s, things like that, of different areas of New York. It's a really badass website um, that has I, – I actually looked where I live, and it's crazy to see how things looked, you know, almost 80 years ago in comparison to how they look now. Um, You can follow us on YouTube. You can just type in Consummate Opinion. You can also type in um, uh, the same thing on Facebook. 
and on Twitter. All that stuff links together uh, on SoundCloud. It's the exact same thing. On SoundCloud, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to put in one or two shows at a time, maybe three. Um, I'm not paying for SoundCloud. I'll show you some start on SoundCloud. i got to be honest. Pay $150 to be able to put all my media on, and that's per year. I didn't want to do it. So if I had that opportunity to do that, you know, a one-time fee, we'd still be on SoundCloud, but we moved to YouTube. So, I mean, that's why I, I tend to care more about YouTube than I do SoundCloud. But what I'll be doing is I'll be uploading the show on all of those platforms. Also, you can follow the radio station, radioshare.com, on Instagram, SoundCloud, and or Facebook, or all of the above. My suggestion is you, if you go to the website, you see all the different shows throughout the week. Uh, I have been on one other show. That was the Waitress Radio. That was on uh, on Fridays from 2 to 3 with Francesca. Um, I, that was that was a good show. Honestly, I haven't listened to any of the other shows, but uh, I'm going to try to get more into that as I'm now on this uh, as a, on a weekly basis. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, – we always start with what's new with you. Trying to Trying to push it off a little bit here until the intern gets here because she's really going to – she really has a lot to say in the what's new with you. But uh what I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do is uh uh start what's new with me. Being that it's been about two weeks since I've been here, um not too much new has happened. I, I did go to New Jersey. Uh being that I'm in um, New York now, um I don't have necessary reason to what we're, we're doing is we're trying to see as much that we can while we're here. Um to be honest, I'm not sure how, how long we're going to be in New York. Uh, I, I'm looking at it about a two-year time frame. Um, but in that sense, I want to accomplish as much as possible. So my buddy's getting married here in, in uh, about three weeks, two weeks, three weeks, something like that. And uh, so we went down there, and I got to be a witness to a, a marriage license. Um, I haven't got to witness a marriage license since I, uh, I did mine. And then I also witnessed my divorce papers not too long after that. So um, I am his witness, and what I was really surprised about is that the two people who fill out the application, as well as the witness, can be can get a fine of up to seventy five hundred dollars if you lie. That's a little bit much. Seventy five hundred dollars is a lot because I know I can't pay for that. So, you know, that was my last question then is listen, if you're lying, now is the time to tell me. If one of you is currently married, you now is the time to tell me because I'm not paying seventy five hundred dollars for anything for you. But other than that, I haven't really done too much. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff coming up here, everything from uh, concerts to uh, little vacations, beach stays, things like that. So I don't have too much that's new with me right offhand. Uh, last time I got to say stuff that was six months in the making. Um, but uh, other than that, I don't have very much. Now, topic-wise, when I mentioned that we're going to be talking about sex today, it's not necessarily like sex or anything like that. It's just a bunch of different stories that I saw in some way, shape, or form relate to sex or sex items or things like that. So uh, I'm going to start with the first one. Um, I'm going to try to load this stuff up on Facebook as we're talking. Uh, probably won't be able to uh, with it just me being here. Back in the day when I had McBride and Grimace and Show and DeGaff and Intern and all that, while there was other banter going on, I was able to actually say and do things timed to where I could actually post stuff as we go. Um, oh, oh, the gap wants to write on here. $7,500 ain't nobody got time for that. Hashtag bitches be lying. Now, I like that. I like that a lot. Do me a favor, man. I know you work. Try to call in even if it's for like two minutes. Two minutes would be really good right now. Um, but uh, so in terms of all this uh, this these topics, um, everything is one way, shape, or form is going to relate to sex in some way, um, whether it be sex toys or pictures. So I'm going to start with the first one on here. Um, it's a glamour model, and uh, mother of two, her name Tracy Kiss, last name Kiss. Online it says that is her real name. Uh, now what she's doing is uh, she's, getting, she's getting a lot of heat from uh, fundraising websites and things like that right now because uh, she's actually – selling topless pictures to get money for charity. Now, they're not completely topless. I, I did see some uh, some actual nude pictures of it, but what I'm seeing in the majority of the pictures are in lingerie. Technically, I don't know why that is any different than bikini pictures on Instagram or anything else like that. So what she's doing is she raised a target, or she had a target for um, about 30,000 pounds 
and I want to say that's close to about $47,000 or something like that. But um, one person alone has donated over 200,000 pounds. And when I, I did the math on that, and that's $306,000. Now, that was 10 days ago. So this lady, she's 27. Actually, her target, I'm sorry, was only 10,000 pounds. My fault on that. It was only 10,000. Her target was only 10,000. And she said that now, because of the amount she's, she's uh, raised, she plans on donating in over 200 charities. Now, here's my thing. My opinion on this is that if she's donating in charity and she's doing the right thing, um, giving to charity is really good. If I had more money, I would donate more to charity. Uh, one of my favorite ones is ALS. And i, I got to be honest with you, the whole Ice Bucket Challenge, if you look at some of their uh, – oh, we've talked about this on the show before. If you look at some of their uh, their paperwork and things like that, you know that all that money didn't go there. Some of these not-for-profit companies – um, like charities, Susan G. Komen, things like that. I mean, there's people getting a lot of money, getting paid really, really well. So if you think about it, you got to watch and, and, and look online to see what you're donating to. I'm going to check that out. That might be something that I, I put on there with one of those little two-part series. I'm going to see whether um, which companies are legit, which ones aren't. Just got to find the website for that, and I will do that in one of the next couple shows. But this glamour model, Tracy Kiss. In getting over $306,000, uh, that was as of 10 days ago, like I said, I don't know where she's at now, but in getting that amount of money, um, she's actually had um, a lot of people, and like I said, two fundraising websites that have actually kicked her off the fundraiser. Like, they will not allow her to do that anymore, and which kind of pisses me off. If you're willing to donate, I get if you're doing something lewd or something that isn't uh, proper, isn't... Uh, maybe politically correct, I guess would be a good word, then I get it. I get not being on there. I get not doing that stuff. But when, you, when you're doing something that is, yeah, topless, I get it, but it's out there everywhere, or in lingerie, and you're planning on donating to charity, I don't understand what the, uh, what the big deal is. Well, one guy alone donated over $200,000. I think that's pretty crazy. Uh, he's, he's given a total of $201,000. Um, so basically, she has changed. Because of this, she, her, her video has gone viral. Um, she's getting attention everywhere now because of this. Um, she's actually changed her goal to $1 million. Um, when I put this website up on our Facebook page, it's actually going to show where you could donate if you're interested in doing that. Um, if not, then, you know, feel free to just, you know, take a look at it and realize that I get the topless portion but to be kicked off fundraising pages, I don't think it should be done. Like, I just don't think that's the right thing to do. All right, moving on, the next one we got here, this relates to porn. Now, the av uh, porn viewers, the average age of porn viewers in the world is 29.7, so a little bit under 30. Um, the average age or the, the age group that actually takes up the majority of that space is actually the 18 to 24 range strange. I mean, not like you don't think that that would be the uh, the, the top age. But uh, they make up 30% of the average people watching porn. And actually, surprisingly, women make up 5% more than the men. So if you're looking at it, that would be 35% to 25%. Now, I pulled up this website, and it's basically – having trouble pulling it up right now, of course, but uh, it's, uh, it focuses more on the website Pornhub, which is a particular web, like a porn website, I guess, that has a, uh, um, a lot of videos and things like that. Now, a majority of this article relates to them specifically. Um, basically, what happened is they've got all these pie charts, and of course, this is going to be something I'm going to have on the website as well, but they've got these pie charts that have the different age groups, um, average age, male, female, all that. And one of them, for Pornhub in particular, their average age is 35.3. So they're actually a little bit above the national average. And I'm going to read right off this graph here. Graph, graph, can't even speak. Um, the average age of male viewers is 36. And again, this is Pornhub specific. Average age is 36. Average age of female is 34. So in that instance, it kind of busts the trend of uh, male, female, age group, things like that, and it's above what the majority of porn viewers are in the world. Now, also, in accordance to that, 
that relates to just Pornhub by itself. Now when we go to the next one when it comes to age by country, because this website actually has age by gender and country, the oldest average age when it comes to watching porn is actually in Japan. Got some crazies over in Japan, so they're watching a little bit older. Their uh, average age is 41.1, so a little bit over 40 years old there. Um, India actually checks in right uh, at 30.3. Now, on this graph that I have, that I'm, again, I'm going to post on the Facebook page, um, it's got a list of countries as it goes down. Japan is the only one that is over 40 years old, where next comes Belgium, Italy, Germany, Austria. I'm not going to read the list on the way down, but some of the major countries. United States, 35.5. Again, this is with Pornhub. Let's see what I got going on here. I got a request for a call in. Let's see who we got. Hey, you're on the air. What's up? Oh, what is up, Dennis? How is it going? I was just uh, listening in on the show. Yeah, I can hear you. you hear me? All right, cool. Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Now, what, uh, so yeah, you heard, uh, did, did you catch the, uh, the Glamour model who's getting heat from the fundraising companies? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just, just signed in when we were getting done with what we knew with you. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, you didn't miss very much at all. Actually, you're going to get to catch the interns. She'll be here in just a couple minutes on her way from work. Um, so, yeah, so you heard the you heard the Tracy Kiss thing. Now, now you're hearing this about the, the porn viewership. Now, does it surprise you that Japan has... No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you see, uh, I, I, I was a personal viewer of Pornhub for many years. I was never asked my age, except if I was over 18. So, where was all this information? I think what it is is uh, like just surveys and stuff that they do uh, throughout. Uh, for here, let's say they go out to Union Square, Central Park, and just take an average uh, uh, just statistical survey. And I, it doesn't say. I'm going to try to find that for you while you're here. But, uh, man, it just doesn't. It's an I can understand Japan. I can understand Japan being the best because they're, I don't know, they're freaky over there. In yeah, general. also they have. They have more rules, like in uh, in terms of like porn in Japan, uh, uh, males can't be showed, things like that. So like everything is completely different. Wow. Yeah, I mean that's uh, yeah. It, it, to me, it's very odd. Um, in, uh, in you know back in the day, of course, many 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 years ago, when I used to uh, uh, visit websites myself, uh, I have noticed that. Yeah, I guess you know I'm tired. Think about it. Yeah, you're right. It would be they'd be blurred out or just not shown in general. <clears throat> oh, well, I think, uh, hold on a second. The gas said something here. The gas said the quality on the call in is not that good. I, it's, it's something that we're working on here. Um, I'm trying to get it mastered, I guess, where, where I put volume and things like that. So the gas, you should try to call in too, uh, when you get a chance. But, uh, Back to that graph, it actually, the lowest one is India at 30.3 out of the countries that were uh, were studied, and the highest one was Japan at 41. The worldwide average is 35.3 in the United States, and again, this is just Pornhub, was 35.5. Did it say what the uh, average women in India, in India was? The average age of the women in India? No, it didn't. Yeah, because the only ones that can't do anything. I don't know if that's just India or a lot of places in the Middle East. Actually, India is the, I see Egypt on here. This is the only place in the Middle East that's actually on this list. And Egypt's at 31.2. So, again, we're at the low end of the spectrum, the second lowest one there. Yeah. And where did you find all this? Uh, this is on Bro Bible. It's on BroBible.com. I will have the, uh, the actual page on the Facebook page. I'm going to send a link to it so you can check it out. Now, there's no link to Pornhub, so unfortunately, I'm not going to do that for you. But uh, now, I'm going to read you what the most popular searches are. This is the most interesting part. From 18 to 24 year olds, the most popular search item is lesbians and stepmoms. On the other end of the spectrum, for those over 65 years old, they're more interested in things, search items like massage and cartoons. Cartoons. Yeah, some real sickos, huh? Yeah, I can't see my my uh, grandmother looking up foreign cartoons. Yeah, I don't think that I would. Uh, 
I don't think that would go very well. Oh, so the intern has just walked in. Fantastic. Intern, I actually have Grimace on the phone. Sit over there. She's going to get a headset on and talk to you in just a minute. Oh, the Gap should love this. The Gap texted me. I think he's at work. He's not able to call in. Uh, oh, he's back. He's texting me again. What do we got here? Yeah, you can use that one. That's fine. Move this up. You're going to have to talk directly into it. So say hello. Hi, hey, everyone. How's it going, intern? Oh, fantastic. I just ran over here from work. So you wanted to have a guy back there? I knew you didn't have one when you first came out. I haven't talked to anybody either, so. <laughs> well, no, good. I actually, I had a job. So I had it for two weeks, and then, uh, and then I got another one, and now I'm good. Awesome. Yeah, she, um, because she hasn't been able to do what's new with you, I'm going to need her to do what's new with you real quick. So, uh, being that it's been yeah, seven months, too. what's, okay, all right, perfect. We'll get Grimace after this. What, uh, what's new with you, intern, since we've been here? Uh, since we've been in New York City, just, I, I don't know, me and, uh, we are trying to do everything. Love it, love the name. <laughs> love it so much. <laughs> everything that's possible to do in New York City and just take advantage of all the events and um, absorb everything New York City has to offer. And I've been so positive and lovely, and we've just been having a good time. That's sarcasm is great. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say hint of sarcasm. Aaron. No. The whole time. Oh, the gas says what's up. It was really hard at first uh, just to adjust from coming from Florida, which is like a small town, um, and then coming into this huge city where everybody is always in a rush. It smells everywhere you go. There's homeless people on every corner. And, uh, hey, there's homeless people on every corner. Well, you didn't have to interact with them or walk you with them or, or smell <laughs> them. You just got to drive right by them. Oh, that's good. Uh, I had to say your house is getting great while you guys are gone. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's that's good to hear. I've been wondering what it looks like on the inside now with uh, four little girls in it. Uh, the, the mother is a special compulsive cleaner, so it's probably just as good a shape as you guys had. And the outside <laughs> yeah. is even better. So, yeah, yeah. I told you now. Uh, now, Grimace, uh, you said you got some something new. So, what's new with you? I'm um, having another girl. Oh, congratulations. You and doing, uh, are much bride, both having babies. She's doing um, end of September or October. So. Wow, that's, that's soon. Oh, my yeah. goodness, congratulations. Pretty much, pretty much right when you guys left, I got bored, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's awesome. You visited some of those websites we were talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It was a huge surprise. Nothing was planned or... Anything like that, so. But yeah, and the other thing that's new with me is uh, almost done with all those treatments I've been going through. I got one more week left, and then I'm done. And uh, it should be, I should be uh, what they call cancer free after that. Well, that's good. Wow. Absolutely. So, uh, that's not it. I just. You gonna stick around for one more topic, at least? I hope you saved a good one for when I was here. Oh, yeah. I got the best ones I'm saving for you. Um, all right. So the next one here, I got a website. It's on EliteDaily.com. It says, Seven Scientific Reasons Why Sleeping Naked is Really Good for You. Okay. I'm into that. Now, first one, it says you'll get way better sleep because your body temperature naturally declines as a part of your circadian rhythm as you sleep deeply. So wearing pajamas could disrupt this natural drop in temperature. As a result, disrupt your body's sleep cycle. Now, Grimace, are you sleeping naked? No, absolutely not. Have you seen the Grimace lately? <laughs> That's uncalled for. No, lately, it's been a while. <laughs> oh, uh, the, the, the gas chimes in. The gas chimes in with easy access. Duh. Uh, that actually is one of the seven reasons. I'll get. I'll get down to that. Now, the next one here doesn't relate to any of us, but uh, the next one is you can air out your lady parts easier easier? Well, you'd be able to air them out instead of not airing it out. I mean, what do you do to try to air them out? I mean, just... 
after you take a shower or you're sleeping. Well, what do you what do you, you like marinate? You marinate all night. Your like lady parts around. To <laughs> I mean, is there, is there an issue with the lady parts that they don't air out? <laughs> oh, well, no, no, I'm not saying, no, I'm not saying there's an issue. I mean, uh, there's no issue here uh, in, in this relationship, I'll say. But uh, overall, uh, I've never experienced a difference. I, 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 I don't know. I, I've never felt a difference, I guess you could say. <laughs> can, can you imagine being in a relationship and with a girl and then, like, you're finally to where you're sleeping in the same bed and you're together and the girl's just like, oh, by the way, I like to sleep naked because I like to let my my lady parts, parts lady parts, just kind of air out when I sleep. It just it feels good. It'd be popping yeah. questions. You like that, <laughs> yeah, don't you? You like that? Uh, our next one here says you'll feel sexier. Uh, it's like, you know, basically. <laughs> All right, next next one after that is it says you can reduce your belly size. Oh, I'm gonna try it. Then. <laughs> Yeah, it says, uh, according to the Huffington Post, your body cools down at night, increasing your growth hormones while simultaneously decreasing your level of, of cortisol, which will result in healthy sleep patterns. So basically, it allows yourself to, uh, um, it allows yourself to catalyze your appetite if you, if your sleep's interrupted. You know, wake up at night, go in, get some food, something like that. If you sleep the entire night, it actually can improve diet by not eating throughout the night. Let's see. Then the next one says, get ready for a lot more sex. The gaff, you'll really appreciate this one. Basically what it's saying that, you know, if you're sleeping naked, as you would say, it is easier access. The gaff's been chiming in on uh, some random stuff here, and that's uh, one of the things he said. That's kind of lazy. I mean, what if you wanted a challenge? What if you wake up in the morning and maybe the, the female is like, oh, I want somebody to, you know, make this exciting instead of just... Stay well, there, you know? <laughs> yeah, like Peter, well, you're guy just rolling over. Exactly. you got two different points of views there. I don't want to do anything strenuous in the morning. I mean, <laughs> besides that. Um, <laughs> and if you're already sleeping naked, there you go. Easy access, like he said. Now, uh, next one here is, uh, says you, you won't have to take a, a shower in the morning. Now, I guess this depends on when you take a shower, because if you don't take a shower the night before, things may not always, the lady parts, as you will, may not be as fresh as they need to be. So I'm going to read this one for you. So if there's one thing girls hate to do, it's shower. There's one thing a, per a human person hates, it's showering first thing in the morning, as it forces you to wake up a full 20 to 30 minutes earlier. If you don't wear pajamas, you'll stay cool throughout the night, drastically increasing the likeness of a good hair day the following morning. If it gets you hot in your sleep, you're going to sweat, and if you sweat, your hair's going to look greasy, and greasy only looks good on food. That's a very strange way they put that last night, but grease does look really yeah, good on food. I work with it every day. Oh, yeah, so I brought a corned beef sandwich, and she told me I couldn't bring it in here, and it's now sitting on top of the fridge, and I'm kind of upset about that. That's perfect. We're not going to be here too long, so. Oh, yeah, I have until uh, 3.45. I have to be back at work. Perfect, perfect. Well, we're going to be done right around then, so. Okay. Uh, next one here is... As somebody said, lazy, uh, it's just easier. Putting on pajamas inherently means more work. You have to take off your clothes, pick out your jammies, and then put them on. It might seem like a lazy thing to say, but sometimes the closet or kitchen or the bathroom is just too far away. You know, I think the main reason that people would wear clothes or not is where they live. Like, in Florida, it's so hot that it's, it is easier, and plus you don't sweat your but off. Are we cursing in this? You're allowed to, yeah. Okay. Um, but if it's too hot to wear anything or have anything on, here in New York City, when it's cold, you're not going to sleep naked because you're going to freeze your ass off. You have to wear it. In your building? It's weird. What do you say? Heat? Heat, yeah. Uh, yeah. We have heat. It comes from the boiler automatically, but it's like we're very hot. Like, uh, it's. It's either too hot or. Super cold. Yeah, there's no in between. So we both share the same heat. Uh, so kind of. You can put your heat on higher, but everyone shares a a community heat. Exactly. Well, do you get community smells from that? No, no community smells. So the community smells are outside in the community, not inside. Oh, okay. So they keep the community smells in the community. Gotcha. I don't know. I've never been, you know, north of North Carolina, so I couldn't tell. You. Now, the, 
Now, the next one here is about the, this new date rape drug. It's called uh, Edizolam. This is a <laughs> Hey, DeGap. DeGap, unless you call in, I'm going to say this is the gas special here. Um, Edizolam is a sedative that can produce amnesia. Uh, what makes it, I guess, exceptionally concerning is the fact that uh, it cannot be detected by most drug tests. So, like the movie Hangover, they go to, uh, they go to the hospital and they detect, you know, rufinol. So, obviously, you got roofied. But in a situation like this, you wouldn't know that you got drugs or anything. Can I just say that in your uh, your little show notes here, which I'm so proud of you. This is so organized. Like, I can't believe that you took the time to organize it this much. Yeah, I did this today. But then you go also posting video of how easy it is to roofie someone. Ah, uh, yes. Well, I mean, I do have a, a web or like a, a web page that I'm going to put on that uh, shows how easy it is to get roofied. Like, if you're not paying 100% attention to your drink, the chances of getting roofied are very high. Okay, that's different. Like, how easy it is to be roofied or how to roofie someone. I mean, I don't think that... Oh, yeah, my, sh- need yeah, to my, uh, my show someone. notes did say that uh, how easy it is to roofie someone. Okay, the video is how it is easy to get roofied. Can I you clarify that? I was actually talking about this with one of the regulars at work yesterday. Someone, a group of guys, actually invented a nail polish for girls to wear so that when they put their, if they, they put their finger in their drink with a nail polish, the nail polish will turn black if there's any, like, chemical or substance in their drink. So the gap says, and I'll get right back to that, yeah. amnesia. That's funny because they never forget me. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, because yeah, that's the one year. horrible the experience was. Oh, 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 brutal. Man, see, you got to call in, man. you got to. Um, so, <laughs> no, the, the nail polish, if you have it on your finger, you put your finger in a drink, like, you know, if you're just whatever, you can nonchalantly do it. The nail polish will turn black if there's any chem- chemicals or substance in the drink. All right, all right. I mean, I could... You really want to stick your finger in every one of your drinks, though? I mean, that or get... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. That is true. That is definitely true. I think you could stick the same finger in more than one drink. It's almost like a chlorine tester at a restaurant. You know, you, you test the uh, the amount of uh, sanitate, like the, the bleach and uh, the chlorine that's in all the sanitizer and stuff like that. Um, you're, I think you're going to like this one. Uh, this is one of the last couple ones that I have on here. Um, it's, it's something called the Seminet. Now, take that in for a second. The gap, you're going to appreciate this one as well. Uh, the Seminet is a sex toy designed to eject fluid. Essentially, it is a squirting sex toy. And why would you want that? Well, what this is being used for, it's being used for same-sex couples and things like that. That uh, uh, The creator for this, her name was Stephanie Ber- Berman, she uh, she used this actually to conceive a child with her same sex partner. What it is is what what you do instead of like a turkey. It's like a turkey baster type concept, I guess. Oh, you can put legitimate in there. Yeah, you can put legitimate you can put in there. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you want to put chocolate syrup in there or something like that, I guess you could. But uh, that's not really the point. Uh, the, I guess. the point is a more <laughs> pleasurable way to. Yes. Get it all in there. Yeah, exactly. Instead of a doctor being in there getting it for you. Or a turkey baster, as Chris likes, or oh. Louise likes to say. Well, th- this wasn't the first one of these, like, uh, sex toys that you can eject fluid, but it is the first one that has been able to use real sperm in a sterile environment. All right, next one. We're running out of time here. Uh, the sex selfie stick. Um... This is another DeGas special. Uh, sex selfie stick allows you to FaceTime the inside of a vagina. Does it talk back? No, it doesn't talk back. But the, <laughs> what is, uh, what is, the name of it is, uh, I don't know, if I'm going to butcher this name, but Vacom Gaga Camera Vibrator. That's what it is. So, uh, so if Show's listening, he can go buy one of these online, like he used to, like one of those accommodators that uh, we used to talk about. Uh, but with these, it can be uploaded to a computer or actually synced to FaceTime. So you can actually physically FaceTime somebody while you're doing this. Uh, Charles, 
or the gas sent me something says uh, hashtag not about that life. <laughs> Why isn't he calling you? He's at work today. He's at work. He called last week. He, I mean, you make time. I made time. You can make time. Uh, he's he's, uh, to go. I did. I did. I called Grimace and I told him about it because I didn't get a hold of him last week or two weeks ago when I filled in on Francesca's show. Um, so uh, just just in case you're wondering, the cost of this item is about $175, and it's actually selling quite well, which is very concerning because, you know, the whole sexting and, and, and pictures and all what. No, what do you get out of that? Like, what do you get out of watching the inside of a vagina? Uh, I don't get anything else. No, uh, I mean, I guess, yeah. I don't know. I couldn't see it being very uh, entertaining. I mean... Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sure personally. It's, yeah, but. it's not for pleasure purposes. It's just you put this stick in your vagina and then you can just watch it. That's it. That is, I mean, essentially exactly what it is. Uh, let's see the. Uh, and now, like I said at the beginning, I was going to do a uh, something that's local, uh, a local story or a local website or a local something every single time. So this one here is about man spreading. I never heard about man spreading before in my entire life until uh, being on the subway before. Got these little advertisements and signs and stuff like that. That uh, uh, up on the top they have uh, don't do this, don't do that, don't eat, don't paint your nails, don't cut your nails, uh, don't do all that type of stuff. While I'm sitting there, another one shows a guy with his legs spread wide open. Basically, don't take up two or three seats when you're sitting in one because they can get a little crowded. Well, apparently this is a real thing and uh, people are getting fined and even arrested. Uh, there were two Latin men who were arrested in Brooklyn on the charge of man-spreading. So what exactly? They get on the subway, and they just spread themselves out so nobody else can... Not like lay down, but they spread their legs. Like they sit, you know, completely spread out. Oh, you know how people okay. sit wide and stuff like yeah, that. Like, I would be able to do that just because I'm naturally tall, but, like, people do this just to, so people don't sit next to them, basically. Yeah, I mean... It's I mean, it's man not spreading. fair, though, because... It's called man-spreading, yes, man-spreading. But if you think about it, there's some people who are so disgustingly obese, their ass takes up two seats itself. So what, a skinny person has to be confined to one seat just because they take care of themselves? But obese people can get two or three in some cases? Hey, I've never done three, but two out are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, uh, with these two guys, who got arrested because, I mean, this isn't... I mean, it's a legitimate charge. It's something new that's kind of coming on the forefront here, but uh, the judge said that he's going to wipe the arrest off the record if they do not get arrested for it again. So it's kind of like they're, uh, they're on probation for man-spreading, basically. So do they have, do they have police that, that, that get up and down the subway while people are riding? Sometimes. Late at night, I see that sometimes, like when I'm heading home at 2.33 o'clock in the morning every once in a while. But, I mean, when you're talking about seven cars on a subway train, they're on one of the cars. They're only going to see what's on that one car. Right. And it is illegal to walk between the cars. Uh, one night I was on there, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning, and this homeless lady comes on. You could tell she was getting ready to beg for stuff, walked through, and it was kind of like, oh, sorry, saw the cops, and just kind of put her head down and went and sat in the corner because technically she could get a ticket for walking between the cars and actually for asking. I don't think you're allowed to necessarily beg for money. I guess you can ask for food, but not money. I forgot how it goes. Well, that's probably why that this one homeless guy, we see him all the time, little shriveled up old man. He just walks with some, like a bucket almost, or like a large cup, and just walks through the aisles. Doesn't say anything. Keeps his head down and just walks with change in his little bucket. Huh. Now, I'm going to do this. Yeah, you say my life? No, it's just like a hand. All the hand handlers down yeah. here with their damn guitar on the road. Yeah, that's what, what I keep trying to tell her. Is that it's it, not it, anything like that, It's just like that. It's just the fact that you don't see it as much because you're not always walking around. You're always driving from place to place. Right, it's in your there. personal space. You have your personal space with your personal vehicle, and you don't have to walk Driver. outside. And then you have your own personal house to live in where you don't have to drive. Drive a delivery truck in our area. Yeah, I'm a delivery truck that's carrying a thousand cases of beer in our area, and I promise you you'll find every man and where there is an homeless guy. Luckily, that's not my job. I can so. imagine Holland and Port Richie is a very rough area, and I guess if you add in Hudson, too, it's, it's pretty bad. Right, I got to Actually, Hudson's not, not as bad. 
the intern has to go back to work and make those millions of dollars she's making while she's up here while I go slave away at my job here in a little bit. But uh, she's going to have to sign off. Yep, I'm leaving. This is cool. This this whole studio thing is really neat. It's definitely an upgrade from what I'm getting in the bathroom. You know, I really enjoyed the couch. We'd all sit back there and drink and stop making sense, but it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of good memories, but this is this is okay for now. Well, now there's a five-year-old and a two-year-old that are drinking out of the shitty cups back there for you. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, all right, so, uh, yeah, so uh, about that corned beef sandwich, just leave that somewhere I can get it. Can I eat my of it? Of course. <laughs> of course, yeah, eat some. That's fine. I'll leave it on top of this. I'll take, like, half and The leave. fridge is in the, uh... Yeah, no, it's right around the corner. Okay. But it's on top of the fridge because it was hot. Okay. All right, that works. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. I hope you can come on again. Yeah, me too. It's not a show without the intern. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm just here to be made fun of and... Pretty much. Yeah, thanks. Pretty much. Um, all right, so, yeah, uh, the last thing I was going to say on this manspreading thing is... Uh, there's this website called the Police Reform Organizing Project. It's like this group that uh, uh, they like to expose uh, discriminatory and abusive practices of the NYPD. So that's one of those things that I'm actually looking into on a future miniseries. Oh, you, Grimace, you can get to hear about my miniseries that I'm going to start next week on uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Everyone's got to love Caitlyn Jenner. Um, and so I'm going to actually have a two-week piece on that. Uh, I'm not going to only talk about that. Obviously, there's only so much bearing and things like that that you can do, but uh, I'm going to touch on it next week and in the following week as well. But back on that police reform, the prop thing, uh, I actually want to look into that because apparently they have all this different stuff about the NYPD and like discriminatory stuff and things like that. I don't want to get into the whole Ferguson stuff and the Baltimore stuff and all that just because that's I just don't want to get into that. That's just too much stuff. Now, I, I will get into protesting at some point in time, but uh, I'm not going to get into the whole the bullshit. Yeah. Um, well, Grimace, like I said, uh, we're going to do this every Monday from about 3 to like 3.50-ish, um, just because I do have to get to work at 4, and I have a long walk, uh, I'm sorry, a uh, long trip down the elevator, five floors, and then about a, I don't know, two-minute walk, one-minute walk. So it's really hectic for me to get to work from here. But, uh, um, no, so this was fun. This was a good time. I'm glad you could call me. Well, next week yeah. I'll, be, uh, I'll be missing next week, but after that I could uh, try to make regular appearances. All right. Well, um, what are you doing next week? Uh, getting injected with the chemo. Ah, uh, yes, you will be missing that. Well, yeah, definitely take care of that. Have uh, Get yourself healthy. Attempting it. Yeah, well, uh, no, it was good that you called in. It was good to talk to you again. Uh, and then two weeks from now, hopefully we'll be having the same conversation. All right, man. All right, I appreciate it. All right, take care. All right, see you. See you. All right, now. So being that we talked about all of our topics, our little sex episode is basically done. Uh, next week, we're actually going to be talking, uh, I've got all these websites, and, you know, I'm just going to name the show for next week. It's Idiots and Craziness. Uh, there's a lot of different things that, um, a lot of different uh, topics and uh, uh, people who have done some of the strangest things. I mean, my number one for next week, which I'm very excited about getting into, is the... Uh, uh, let's see, the 76-year-old woman who was kicked out of the KFC for breastfeeding her 42-year-old son. I want to make sure I look more into that because that's going to be a fantastic uh, fantastic conversation to have. But I've got five or six different things for next week, along with the beginning of the Caitlyn Jenner piece that I'm going to do, and along with another thing next week about New York is going to be uh, how what type of hourly wage you need to have to be a functional human being and to afford rent and where you can afford rent in New York. Uh, being that that's a huge thing, I mean, the house that I own, I pay two and a half times more here to rent a one-bedroom apartment that is a third of the square foot of the house that I own in Florida, which is absolutely insane to me. But, again, this is my choice to come up here for work, so um, it's just something you got to deal with. But that's what we're going to talk about there next week, so we're going to have that. We're going to have the uh, Caitlyn Jenner talk 
number one out of two. And we're going to have some other stuff on here. Like I said, I'm going to try to update the uh, Facebook page. You can just look up Thompson Opinion on Facebook, on Twitter, on SoundCloud, on YouTube, on all that stuff. I'm going to have all the websites here on our um, our Facebook page here in probably the next 20 minutes. And then I'm also going to have the YouTube and SoundCloud updated tomorrow night or Wednesday night. I'm not exactly sure. It'll probably be more Wednesday night. So it's going to be a couple days before it's actually going to be on. Um, Keep listening in on Radio Sherry, um, RadioSherry.com. There's many other shows other than just this one, so please listen in. Um, I'm trying to build some regular listeners. It's just going to take some time, but um, feel free to call in. Uh, I will be here next week. Definitely call in and hear Waitress Radio on Friday. Francesca, she's really cool. Uh, again, the number six zero five four seven seven three zero three seven. 6054773037. Give us a call. And it's Radio Sherry. It's uh, R-A-D-I-O-C-H-E-R-I.com is the website and again if you're on google chrome you can actually listen to it right on there i appreciate everything and uh, i will talk to you guys next week